This video was originally presented as part of a tutorial on ways to approach efficient modeling at the 2016 No Magic World Symposium. Thank you to No Magic for granting permission for a wide public distribution of this content. And I encourage you to consider attending a future No Magic World Symposium if you have interest in their products. There are a number of speakers that are featured, invited, uh, and present, as well as the No Magic staff. And it's a great way to learn about No Magic's products and help advance the state of the art of model based systems engineering. So they've added some nice interface uh, content uh, and management features to 18.3. So let's go ahead and just wire up a logical architecture here. Um, so I'm just going to throw some connections here between my blocks. And um, I'm going to go ahead and turn the stamp on so that as I, now that I've defined that I'm using composition relationships, I can just really uh, make some good time here and connect these up. Turn the stamp off, and now we have our system of interest all wired up and connected with part properties. But the question is, where are the interfaces between these, and how do we know what to connect? And so I really like to let the system tell us that. And um, so we'll go ahead and we will show you how we've used, we can use activity diagrams to pull all that information together for us. And so we'll go ahead and select all the parts here. And there's no ports yet to work with, but that's OK. And so here we go. So here's all of our parts that we have. So we've got the system of interest, we've got subsystem 1 and 2, and then we have logical block 10. But how do we know what's talking to what? And so because we like to use operations with parameters, with inputs and outputs, um, it gives us a very clean way to inherit that and see what needs to be connected. So I have made a couple activity tables, or activity diagrams here, that basically have wired up uh, several of these functions with uh, logic and object flows. So we have signal 5 flowing uh, we have signal 3 flowing. We have a variety of signals flowing. So we want to know what has to flow over connectors. So we will go ahead and make a relatively uh, complicated table here that will tell us that. And so we will go ahead and create a generic table. I'm just going to call it the item flow helper for the time being. But we're going to go ahead and base this on object flows. So half the trick in Magic Draw is understanding what to make your table the basis of, or what, what to use as the basis. In this case, we're going to make it the flows. And this is every object flow in the model. And here's its source. And here's its target. Now that's not terribly helpful to us because we're using call operations. We need to know who owns these and then who owns the uh, logical block or what, what functional block owns it and then what logical block specializes it so we know what to connect. So we're going to make a custom column here and we'll call this the uh, upstream block and we'll make another one called the downstream block. And so this is another meta chain. We have an object flow and we want to look at its source which is going to be an output pin and we want the owner of that output pin which we know is a call operation which then has an operation which then has an owning block And we want all specific classifiers. So that'll give us all the blocks that specialize that block. And so this shows us that the upstream block is right here. And we can see who's downstream of us that logical blocks one and six both do this as well as logical block one. So let's say we just want to look at the logical blocks. So I've tweaked that to just go specific classifier. So that goes one hop down. It doesn't go two hops down to the physical level. So this is the upstream block. But notice some of these um, you know, don't go anywhere. And this one actually has a fork. So we want to get past the fork. And so the way to do that 
is to we need to make a union and so we basically want the initial meta chain that we made and we want a second one that is going to jump past that control node so here's a source and that we're going to call that a control node we want its incoming object flow and its source which was an output pin and its owner was a call operation action with an operation that had its owner that was a block that now has specific classifiers and so if we do that we've now picked up the blocks that are one hop away so that's a really nice elegant way using a, a union to jump past that. So now we can do the same thing for downstream. So here's the source. Here is, actually we can even hide the name field because that's not really helpful to us. And so this just gives us the upstream block. We should show what is flowing uh, along this as well. So we will go ahead and I will make a meta chain to show what's flowing. And then we will go ahead and uh, get the target one. So for the, we will, to create the, what's flowing on this, we'll do a meta chain We'll go to its source. We'll just get its type, and that should tell us what signal's flowing. Now we just need the downstream block. Again, that's a union of a meta chain. Now we're looking at the target end, which is an input pin, which has an owner, which is a call operation action, and then operation has an owner. That's a block. That has a specific classifier. And then for the other part of it, we have to jump past the any control nodes that are in the way. So this is why I call it wrestling the genie because sometimes it's uh, a little bit of a challenge but uh, the results are usually worth it and it's really great the information that you can tease out of the model if you, uh, if you put a little bit of effort and thought into how you organize it. And So again I'm a big fan of inheritance as much as possible and I would say at the same time this is why I'm not a big fan of swim lanes because by changing some inheritances, we can learn a lot. So now this tells us who's downstream. And so um, if we do this, this now tells us that signal one needs to flow between blocks one and one. And it looks like it's talking to itself potentially and then six. So it looks like one and six have to send signals to one, six, and two. And so you could have discussions with your um, SMEs, make sure this makes sense, but we'll go ahead and set this up so that we have a connection between 1, 6, uh, and 2. So we'll come here to our system of interest, and we want to connect up 1 and 6, and we will connect 1 and 2, and 6 and 2.
And now if we just drag the signal on here from the containment tree, or an interface block on here from the containment tree, um, it will, let me double check, we, this is telling us that that signal one has to flow on those. So I'm gonna grab a signal one interface block and it automatically has put these on here for me uh, with directions. Uh, so you could either manually create these or you can type them uh, that way. And so now we have those. Um, actually, it turned out a little worse, sorry about that. Now you can also drag the signals on there and again, because they're directional, uh, it will let you go ahead and uh, capture that. And now in very short order, we have wired up um, the message flows that need to flow between um, these blocks based solely on the information that we've gained from our activity diagrams and um, how they're inherited. So again, I really don't like using swim lanes. I avoid them whenever possible and I uh, always uh, prefer to inherit. So simply by inheriting the functional blocks and the operations that are the types for these call operation nodes on these activity diagrams, uh, by inheriting them with the inheritance matrix, uh, we can see um, who's responsible for performing what function. And again, if we go ahead and add uh, a new one, so if I add logical block seven to this now, we come back to our item flow helper, we now can see logical block seven needs to be included in this as well. And so we can then add it and, and, and discuss and negotiate with our colleagues what exactly uh, that means. But we can go ahead and create it and then just drag on our interface block and create the ports and uh, we can proceed at that point. So again, do not underestimate the power of the, um, the ability to do these meta chains and jump around the uh, model from nodes uh, through connectors to other nodes.